Hello, welcome to RC Video Reviews. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to do wireless trainer using the internal four-in-one multi-protocol module that you find on a TX16S. Quick look at how this works. I'm gonna use my radio over here on the left, which is the master radio. And you can see as I move the aileron stick, the ailerons are moving, the elevator is moving, and then here's the rudder also moving. And then on this radio, which is a student, as I move these sticks, nothing happens, right? No aileron movement, no elevator movement no rudder movement. Now when I hit SA down on the master radio, now I've turned over control to the student radio and I can move the sticks and we see aileron movement, elevator movement, and rudder movement. And then if I turn SA up, then that control is now removed and we're back to the master radio. This is actually a really simple setup and I'm gonna show you exactly how it's done. All right, let's lay down some ground rules on how this works. To start, you're gonna need three transmitters. You need one transmitter in your student radio and you need two transmitters in your master radio. And one of those transmitters on the master has to be a four-in-one multi-protocol module. On the master radio, you can use any combination of transmitters you want. In my case, I'm using the internal four-in-one and an external Express LRS. You could also use an internal 4-in-1 and an external 4-in-1. You could use an internal 4-in-1 and a TBS Crossfire. You could use an external 4-in-1 and an internal Express LRS. So you can use any combination of transmitters on the master that you want, as long as one of them is a 4-in-1 multi-protocol module. On the master radio, there are two radio links that occur. I'm gonna call them transmitter A and transmitter S. Transmitter A is what connects you to your air unit and transmitter S is what connects you to your student. Transmitter A can use any over the air protocol you want. It can use Express LRS, TBS Crossfire, Ghost, Tracer, DSM, doesn't matter. Any over the air protocol you want. Transmitter S must be a four in one multi-protocol module in RX mode using either DSM RX, FlySky RX, or FreeSky RX. I'll show you those configurations in just a moment. Just make sure you understand that the student link transmitter S has to be a four in one module using either DSM, FlySky, or FreeSky in the RX mode. On the student radio, you only need one transmitter and it has to be able to use DSM, FlySky, or FreeSky. So any DSM radio you have, any FlySky radio you have that supports 2A, and any free sky that supports D16 will work as a student radio. It does not have to be a RadioMaster TX16S. It doesn't even need to be Edge or OpenTX for that matter. Any radio that supports DSM, FlySky, or free sky will work. Let's take a look at the configuration on both radios. We'll start with the master. Step number one on the master radio is to establish an air link with your model, just like you would with any other model that you fly. In my case, I'm using Express LRS, so I've got my external module set up using CRSF. And as I move my sticks, you can see I can move the control surfaces on this plane. So just a standard radio setup, just like you would do for any other model you fly. Okay, that's step number one. Now step number two is transmitter S, that's the student link. So let's take a look at that one. We're gonna use the internal module in my case because I've got an internal four and one and I've got mine set to FlySky 2A. You can use any of these protocols in the list that show you RX at the end. So here's DSM RX, we'll go ahead and turn that one on. We use DSM RX and I also wanna give you a quick caveat. I did some experimentation with FreeSky and it swamps, I kept getting student lost. That said, the radios were in a confined space. So maybe outdoors it might behave differently, but I didn't have that same kind of issue using DSM or FlySky. Just throwing that out there. Now I've got my multi-protocol module, Transmitter S, that's the student link, set up for DSM RX. The next thing we have to do is go under model settings under trainer and we have to turn on mode master multi. And all that does, is it tells the trainer, look at the multi-protocol module for input. So I'm gonna just hit multi. The last thing you need to do in terms of the setup is set up a special function, and it's a very simple one. Pick any switch you want. You could use a momentary switch, a three position switch, any switch you want. You could even do logic. I've got logic on the channel that'll show you how to do a quick take back function using a logical switch. So any switch that you want, you can use. In my case, just for simplicity, I used one that you could see easily, SA down. So I'll edit this one and show you the configuration. I have SA down, the function is trainer, 
In my case, for value, I'm using channels. There are a couple of other options, including sticks or individual sticks. I'll show you a little bit about that at the end of the video, so if you wanna learn, stick around to the end. But I'm gonna use channels for this example, and that's it. Last thing you need to do is hit enable to turn the special function on. So now I've got a special function. When I put SA down, you can see that highlights, and that means I've passed control over to the student radio. That takes care of the setup on the master radio. Let's take a look at the student radio. On the student radio, press the model button and then scroll down to your internal RF or external. If you're using external, you have to find one that's using the protocol that you want to use on your master. And in my case, I switched from FlySky 2A over to DSM. So I'm going to switch this one to DSM. So I'll click on DSM. Under RF protocol, I like to put this on auto. So just put that on auto and that's it. The student radio is now set up. In the spirit of full disclosure, I copied the configuration off the master radio for the RCVR1 demo model that I have onto the secondary radio. It's a good idea to do that. That way everything works the same. If you're using a different style of radio, like a DSM or a FlySky radio, you'll just have to go in and program it so it works with your sticks and your rates and your throttle cut and whatever other channels you want the way it works on your radio. Now that both radios are set up, let's establish that student link by binding the student radio and the master radio together. Okay, to establish that S-link, that's the link between the student and the master, we need to go into model settings on both radios and we'll scroll down. In my case, I'm using internal RF for both. So I'll click on internal RF. And remember, the master, that has DSM RX and the student has DSM, okay, master, student. What we're doing is we're configuring the multi-protocol module to behave like a receiver. That's why it says RX on the end. The student radio is gonna behave like a transmitter in any other configuration you have. It doesn't know that it's talking to another TX16S. It just thinks it's talking to a receiver. Okay, so DSM RX on the master, DSM on the student. We'll go down to the bind section and I'll hit bind on the transmitter and I'll hit bind on the student. With the bind process complete, we can exit the configuration for both radios. Now we'll take a look at the outputs and you can see as I move my aileron stick, we see output occurring over here on the master radio. If I turn the SA switch into the up position, that output now goes away and the only outputs we have come from the master. One more time so you can see everything all together. I'm moving my aileron on the student radio. Nothing's happening on the master. Nothing's happening on the model. But if I put my SA switch in the down position and I move these sticks, now you can see movement on the model and you can see outputs on the master. Earlier in the video, when I set up the special function on the master for the trainer setup, I told you I would tell you the difference between this value channels and sticks. I'm using channels right now, and what that means is anytime I send information from the student radio, any channel that I'm broadcasting will get sent to the master. So on the Express LRS receiver, I've got channel five set up to be my arming switch up here with SH. So as I move that SH switch, watch channel five move on the student radio, and then you can also see it moving here on the master radio. That's channels. Everything that you have coming off of the student radio over the air to the master will get transmitted to the master. Now, if I go back into my model settings and change that special function to not be channels, but only be sticks, what happens is the only information that's transmitted are the sticks. So as I move my sticks, you can see I have movement here, but as I move that SH switch, nothing happens on channel five on the master. There is an advantage in using sticks for trainer mode, and that's that when you set up trainer under the system settings on the radio, you have the ability to change the stick motion from add to replace or off. So depending on how you want your student to interact with the model, you can either use add or replace or turn the channel off. So if we turn the channel off, that means when we go back to the model output and the student moves the aileron, there'll be nothing sent over to the master. However, if they move the elevator, you can see that that still works. When you use the add function, what that means is that the instructor can interact with the student's controls. So if the student moves the elevator all the way to the up position and the instructor says, eh, let's not go quite that far, they can make a minor adjustment to the student's input. So the difference between the two is that when you're in channels mode, whatever the student radio sends to the master, that's what gets sent up to the model. When you're in sticks mode, you have the ability on the master radio to interact with what the student is doing. So you can make minor adjustments as the student flies. 
If you like the content, make sure you leave a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell so you know new videos hit the channel. YouTube should be recommending another video for you right about now. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy and get out there and fly something.